Good morning, Nashville. Hello there. Welcome to Everyday Poetry, poetry for the people. I'm Sandy Gertz, and I'm very happy to be here today. <sighs> How's your weekend going? How is everything? You know, the weather in Nashville's been awesome. Now, it's a little cloudy today, but it has really, really felt like summer, hasn't it? Yeah, I've been digging it. Really, really loving it. Having a great time, enjoying my new backyard and enjoying the park and running the dog. And yeah, it feels like, like I said last, I think we were talking about the weather a couple weeks ago. And I said, I love when you feel like you can be barefoot all day and then go out into the night air. You don't need anything on like a jacket or anything and just barefoot go out into the night, warm air. So I've been loving it. Um, I said, ask me in September how much I'm loving this summer weather because <laughs> Nashville's summer lasts like nearly all year long. But yeah, so I hope you're having a great weekend. And welcome to our one week delayed Mother's Day show. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited because, you know, we can celebrate Mother's Day every week, right? Every day, you know. Thank, be thankful for your mom. And uh, today is exciting because we have my very first in studio guest. Woohoo! Let's hear it. Jessica Bates is here. She's just over there breathing rapidly right now. <laughs> but she's going to, she's going to, you know, get her breath. And uh, so I said, you know, we're going to ease into this. Um, Jessica, woo. Sorry, my mic went out there a second. Jessica Bates is uh, a native Nashvillian. So she's bringing her, we're going to make a lot of bad puns today. today. She's bringing her first book into the world today. We're going to make a lot of birth and motherhood puns, bad, intended, unintended. And it, her book is called, it's beautiful. You guys saw some of the images from the cover on the promotions. It's called Birth and What Came After. Uh, poems on motherhood and you know here we are at everyday poetry being a working class mainly poetry show providing poems that are accessible and that celebrate our our work and working class lives and what you know I've been waiting to celebrate the work of mothers I've been chomping at the bit to do that um, I don't write a whole lot about motherhood I don't know. I just feel like I did originally when my boys were really young, when they were first born. And I was sharing this with Jessica that we have some commonality there with that birth and bonding and such. But um, I don't. I don't know. Maybe I feel like I can't get it right. But um, yeah, I've been really wanting to do a show like this. So we teased some of this book of Jessica's early in earlier shows. I read a, a couple of the poems. And I think now... When we get her on here in a few minutes, she also loves Sharon Olds, as I do, one of the greatest living poets of our time. Now, Sharon really writes about motherhood and all domestic concerns extremely well, of course. And I thought I would go back to this poem and just sort of start out our mood because we're going to be going, get ready, guys. We're going to be talking about birth and... Uh, <laughs> nursing and bonding so i know you can appreciate that too but this is the history of medicine which kind of i really love takes us takes you back to if you've been a mom or it's been a long time since you've been in the trenches with your kids little it takes you back to that time of uh pink medicine <laughs> you know that right you know so this is history of medicine by sharon olds finally i fondly remember even benelin robitussin Actifed, Tedral, Erythromycin, Penicillin, EES. I can see the tidy open mouth and the spoon's regular journey toward it. The bowl almost convex with its shuddering load of blackish maroon. Time slowed down as the spoon went in. I can still feel the thrum in the handle that little tug like nursing, and then the pulling of the spoon out of the mouth, ampicillin, ipecac, St. Joseph's, tetracycline. My body tuned to the four hour intervals. We made one being, 
the bottle, and the child, and I. I remember it with longing. Even the eardrops, lice shampoo, wart glaze. Even the time when our son would not take his tedril, he was standing in his crib and he spat it out and I gently jammed another dose through his teeth and he spat it out until the bars and cruising rail were splattered with dots of heavy syrup. And he understood I cared about the matter even more than he. As I cleaned him up with a damp cloth, I told him the germs were strong. We had to staunchly fight them. I can hear my voice, calm and cheerful. I can see myself, a young woman with an orderly array of bottles behind her. She is struggling to be good, to be healed. All right. That is the history of medicine by Sharon Olds. And I'm reading that from the Wellspring book. Of course, with Alfred Knopf, I guess, publishes a lot of her work. But man, hello, ladies and mothers out there. Does that not take you back? And um, I think I was going to play a song, but you're, you're breathing really well over there. So I think we're going to like just go ahead and uh, bring in our guest, Jessica. Try that out. Hello. <laughs> Hi. There you are. <laughs> Although you got to maybe pull that down a little yeah. bit or. I'm yeah. Shorty. Yeah. How tall are you? Five two. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I think I only have like an inch and a half on you. But uh, so folks, um, say hello to Jessica Bates. Hi, Jessica. Hello. Yeah. Maybe just uh, maybe a maybe tie it closer. I'm going to turn you up a little. Hello. Yeah, hello. that's better. Yep, that's better. I, I got you turned up. up. Yeah. And you can awesome. hear yourself. Awesome. Here we are. Hey, what do you Yay. think of the digs? Pretty palatial. It's really nice in here and cozy. <laughs> I, <kinda like> it. <laughs> I know we love it. It's our it's our little palace out here in Pegram. Oh, that's a good one. Peas. Ooh, Pegram palace. Yeah. So, Jessica, how are you today? I'm really good. Thank I've you had for a coming out. Weekend. Oh, yes. good. Yes. Well, you've had like this is a cherry on top. Did you have a Mother's Day sh or a, mother shower? I had a mother bridal shower? Bridal shower yesterday wow. for my best friend, and then last night. All of my college girlfriends got together, many of whom are moms. So it was <sighs> a wonderful, women-filled weekend. Yes. So this is the perfect ending to it. Awesome. So. Awesome. Well, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions about yourself, and I have your bio here as well. Great. Um, oh, we should just say, we met on Instagram. Yes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you're like the, I don't know, you're like, maybe the even more, but you're like the second person like I've really made like a real connection friends with. Yeah. Well, just a, purely through great. Instagram. Yeah. Maybe there's a few more, but Br Brandy Smith Brown, if you're out there, we made friends. <laughs> we went to lunch one day and the waiter came and we're like, we met on Instagram. It's our first <laughs> date. <laughs> it was so funny, but I admired her and, you know, we had these connections. So I started to see, I don't know who followed who first or what, but it, isn't it funny how social media has like a good side yeah and um so we'll chat about your background and such but jessica bates here i'm looking at this beautiful birth <laughs> book <laughs> birth and what came after and um let's just have you first off read one whichever yeah. you like and then we'll talk great um i'm gonna start with one near the beginning uh, and it's called what the body remembers there are things no one talks about there was pregnancy things happen to your body but the birth looms in the distance, and like a strong, dark wall, there is nothing past it. You cannot see past it. The body forgets pain, she said. Otherwise, women would have only one child. Is it true? Has my body forgotten? It has been almost five months, and here is what I remember. I felt the urge to pee a thousand times, but I could never go. I sat on the toilet of the hospital bathroom and tried to push a body out. I tried to just sit easily and let the body slip out. I tried to sneeze and feel, feel it shoot out. I existed as many separate pieces, a voice in my head, a naked, heaving belly draped occasionally with a white hospital sheet, a woman surrounded by friends and family as she sweated and breathed through rushes of energy bumping through the body. I existed in my doula's hands that rubbed and kneaded and caressed me for an entire rotation of the earth. And in other ways, I existed nowhere during these hours. They are a different life. 
It makes no sense to write about it chronologically now. My mother threw a blanket over the wall clock. The time, the time. In one hour, I'll have my baby. In one more hour. It was a trap, a maze. My grandpa was obsessed with clocks. What is time even for? At 10 a.m., I traveled into my body and found my sack of water and told it break, and it listened. I was a glistening goddess, naked and pacing. My mother brushed and braided my hair. I breathed forever, just breathed. In, out, in, out. It will not, it cannot last forever. We were all suspended in a white cloud that knew no minute hand. There was just me, a heavy body that cracked ever so slowly open. And then I split in two and he was born, blue and quiet. I felt raw and inside out. I felt the power of my body and I felt no pain. Oh, Jessica. <laughs> Man. That's beautiful and brilliant thank you and <laughs> wow <laughs> everyone out there that has not experienced this is gonna want to experience it now right i hope so <laughs> or run far away from it <laughs> i you know it's so cool i what i love is um so you know this is great you start with birth because we'll get to nursing and medicine oh, yeah. and all that other stuff so we're gonna just stay in birth for a while mm -hmm. can you handle it Sounds listeners good. can you handle it <laughs> you know i'm gonna have everybody calling in with their birth stories here in a second but you know <laughs> that i love how you can let your mind and imagination go into the center of yourself and and be able to express what that birth is really like i mean it's not something that is, uh, it's not something you see expressed like this every day, really. And I've read a lot of female poets. Yeah. Uh, and poets write about, you know, being a parent, being a mother, mm -hmm. childhood days, babies, all that. But really to go in and tell your water to break and <laughs> give it, you know, personification. And, and um, gosh, this is written like, would you say, would you say this is written in like it's almost kinda, prose form? It is at more first. of a prose poem. It's um, most of them are you know look like poems on the page, but there are a few that are actually just paragraphs, and that's one of these. It breaks into some like uniform stanzas there at yeah, the end too. Yeah. So it's but that's also a bit like <laughs> birth <laughs> and the form. Yes. You, you're kind of in this watery. She's got on the page here what the body remembers. Um, she's got this third stanza that just gets really loose and and the bot talking about um the voice in her head i like this i tried to sneeze and and feel it shoot out i existed as many separate pieces a voice in my head a naked heaving belly draped occasionally with a white hospital sheet a woman surrounded by friends and family as she sweated and breathed i existed in my dola's hands and then sh going down, going down, skipping. And in other ways, I existed nowhere during these hours. Wow. <laughs> uh, and it says, um, I existed nowhere during these hours. They are a different life. You want to talk about that? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, birth was pretty crazy. I gave birth at Vanderbilt with the Vandy nurse midwives who were amazing. And was there a dola? Um, there was, yeah. Okay. I had a doula there, a doula, but okay. she, um, but I also had a midwife who was there. Gotcha. Um, but the midwife was more like a doctor in and out. She didn't stay with me the whole time. The doula yeah. was right by my yes. side, almost laboring with me. And it was really a, I didn't know what to expect. I had never seen a birth with a doula or really, I decided a couple of weeks before giving birth to have one. So it was kind of a spontaneous decision. Right. Um, but she just provided so much support for me and for my family members, and um, it wouldn't have gone the same way without her, really. Wow. Um, there were times where um, she, you know, the baby's head is in a certain position and it needs to be turned, and she oh, said, yeah. um, get on the bed, I'm going to get a scarf, and she put it under my hips and started wiggling my hips to try to move the baby's head. She said, they don't like for me to do this in hospitals, <laughs> but I'm going to do it really quick. And then when the when the midwife came back, the baby's head was in the right place. So she had some magic and wow. some, some, you know, old woman knowledge that has yes. been passed down. It was just really, really incredible to see. But as I, I would go into the bathroom and try to pee, which I couldn't ever pee, but I felt my bladder was so full. Sure. 
but it was like the moment being alone in the bathroom and feeling like it would never end. Yeah, like I was yes. completely alone, and yes. no one could help me get out of this. Ah, uh, you know, it's it was, all up it to was you. Just me. So oh, I just man. felt alone, even though there were a lot of people around me. Yes, you didn't. You and I love how you were like, I exist with the doula holding my hand. I'm the woman surrounded by family, but I'm this nowhere bill. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nowhere bill. No, for lack of a better way to yeah. put it, and, and that whole you know sisterhood of women thing, like. Uh, I mean, I gave birth, believe me, a long time ago. That was not <laughs> available to me. I, w- I think that yeah. would be really cool. Yeah. But I did have, it's so weird how much commonality when I read your work, but I, I did have an experience with my firstborn that, you know, things weren't going so well. <laughs> and um, he was posterior. Mm-hmm. So I had these women, I liked how you said they said, we're not supposed to do this. I, but I had, I didn't have a doula or anything, but I had this, these female nurses came in at one point who were really like, um, pretty funny and you know joking with me a lot and they're big, were kind of big and jovial they look like they could get things done and uh-huh. they came in because it was very close to me maybe having to go you know otherwise surgery right. or something they needed to turn them around so they said when the doctors were out of the room they're like we're gonna just turn turn this baby around you know <laughs> and I was like what and like literally they did <laughs> yeah and 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 like God loved them because I didn't have to, you know, have a C-section, right? Right. Yeah. Because post and it and they just literally turned like somehow we did it, and it reminds mm-hmm. me of what you're just saying there. Yeah, it's magic. It is magic, <laughs> and it's like when everyone can focus. I, I remember it, my water hadn't broken. Yeah, but I was at, you know, I was ten centimeters. Like I was ready. Yes. I was yes. Ready to oh, go. I was ten centimeters but for like for, for I days. <laughs> and then my water hadn't broken, and it was really I was doing a lot of yoga at the time, and I was trying to feel inside of my body, and I said, "I'm going to break my water now." And then wow. my sisters just started laughing because I it just did. You it went to that place did. and you told your body. I was like, "I can do it." And then I kept. Then I would say. I'm going to push this baby out now, but that didn't work. That, that oh one happened hours and hours later. Oh, yeah. But um, but yeah, it sounds like you had this, yeah, wonderfully comforting experience with people around you. And I mean, I yes, I, yes. I didn't want really anybody around me, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, my at that time husband was there, of course. Um, right. But, you know, it's like you're in a place. I like how you give expression to that where – you're surrounded, but really, you're all alone in this. Yes. bringing this child into the world. Yeah. Ah, uh, do you want to read a um, a uh, another one like that, or move in move into? Uh... Um, let's see. I'll read another quick one that is about birth. Yeah, um, let's stay in it. It's a little. We got time. Last time. Um, this uh, I have two sisters, and they were both with me for the birth. Um, nice. This one is called "Song for My Second Sister." Freckled sister, funny sister. I stood breathless behind the doctor while mom pushed you out. I skipped school that day, and so did our other sister. We waited, 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 and then you were here. Hello, sister. Welcome. I was nine. I don't remember much about our mother that day, but I remember the energy in the room, like water ready to break down a wall. Two perfect decades later, you nap while I labor. You laugh and talk with our other sister while I labor. You snack. You go to class and you come back. Still, I'm in labor. You skipped your evening class. Good thing, because that's when he pushed his way out. I remember your face scrunched in disgust. You stood gripping hands with our sister, eyes on my spread legs. I wanted to give birth squatting, but instead I was lying on a bed, wringing my body with each contraction and between them pretending I was dead. There's a Buddhist meditation where you lie still. You play dead. You see your skin rot and fall away. Your muscles dissolve. Your bones turn to ash. And the wind wipes you away. I remember your face calm and free of worry. You, sister, who used to want to cut people open and inspect them after death. The midwife called, move the light. And you jumped to help before any of the nurses. Little assistant midwife sister. When he slipped from me, finally, finally, blue and wet and warm. Hello, world. I remember your face wide open in awe. Mm, that's nice. <laughs> so your sisters are what age in relation to you? Um, they are, I'm the oldest. They're four years younger and nine years younger. Okay. So we're pretty spread Interesting. Spread out. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes. 
that also <laughs> gives such great expression to the whole process. I love it. And let's just talk about, you know, that moment because it's the best moment when the, you yeah. said, well, hello world when the baby <laughs> comes out. Yeah. And I, now maybe I did, I tried to find my earliest, earliest poems and, you know, this is like eons of computers ago. So I couldn't find right. the one that I wanted to share with you. But I remember I did attempt to write about, uh, now this is my firstborn. Uh, we're mm -hmm. going to embarrass him. <laughs> you know who he is. Um, but he has very, very blue eyes. And so when he first presented himself to the world, mm -hmm. I just remembered, wow, huge blue eyes and no crying, just kind of looking around like, mm -hmm. hey, world, yeah, yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm here. I was a little reluctant. Right. You know, I waited 10 <laughs> extra days and put you through. <laughs> oh, but yes. I'm I'm here now. And like, it was no, it was like um, so peaceful and like hello new creature yeah it's really amazing yeah how they're just there <laughs> i know after all that <laughs> and then the hospital <laughs> sends you home with the baby and you're like i don't know how to take care of this thing <laughs> but do you um did yours like cry right away or because uh, my no, second one waited. did he, okay he, yeah everyone was quiet and waiting for him to cry yeah and it and just didn't happen and did, i thought that was weird he did in a minute but it took him you know he was kind of just eyes open looking yes around. it's like a wondrous he, thing yeah and they look so around with wonder alien it looked yes like it from another world you know it's like where jessica <laughs> jessica oh wait i don't have a sister but i swear hey. man i mean that that was what i wanted to say but i thought that's gonna be too weird for me to say that but i thought alien it looked like yes. because of course this world is alien and foreign to them they've been yes. in this womb all this time having things pretty awesome food delivered right <laughs> <laughs> deliver you don't have to go anywhere and then I really felt like that's so amazing that you said that and maybe other you know hundreds scores of women have said it but I, I just haven't really spoken to anyone that described it that way but it, I did feel like wow I mean you know he looked like alien and because you know their faces their um when they're first born, like their eyes are overemphasized mm -hmm. and yes. <laughs> and the top of their head is kind of overemphasized. And, and they're blue. Yeah. Purplish. Yeah. Like they don't, yeah. Like the no, you know, their skin tone takes a few minutes or hours to like become what it's, it's like going to e. be. It's like E.T. But that, like a very gorgeous E.T. Yes. folks, listeners. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> he was a beautiful baby. But oh man, this is just amazing. So I hope listeners that you're enjoying our little, I told you it's going to get intimate. It's getting intimate quickly here. <laughs> um, I just want you to know that we are listening to Jessica Bates and uh, her book, Birth and What Came After, which you can go to www.jessicabateswriter.com to get this gem. And uh, I want to also tell you that uh, we're WRFN LP Pasquo. <laughs> I don't want to forget. And we're Radio Free Nashville on the dial if you're driving around Nashville at 107.1 and 103.7 FM. And I also want you to know this, folks, that you can call in and chat. I don't know if, if we can handle your birth experience, but <laughs> maybe. <laughs> now, if any of these poems resonate with you moms out there, you can call in live, moms, dads, anyone, uh, 615-835-3224, WRFN. And you're listening to Everyday Poetry. So... Where are we going to go next, Jessica? I'm so excited. Well, I think I would like to read one called Fears. All um, right. A lot of moms I know and talk to get some anxiety after uh -huh. they give birth. And yeah. They're, uh, you know, you have a newborn to care for and it's uh, a new experience. So, you know, gotcha. here's, a, here's a poem about fears. Good. You are so small and there are so many ways you could die. I dreamed I dropped you from the top of a steep staircase. I watched your body bounce down. My hand on your head is like palming a fuzzy peach. I could crush you. Zipping up your sleep sack reminds me so much of a body bag. Oh, man. That's so honest. That's, That's so nice. honest. Oh, my gosh. I Authentic. haven't read that out loud before. It was kind of difficult but um. I I did you see me <laughs> pumping my chest yeah I'm I wish you could see us here folks live from Pegram she starts reading this that just that first stanza this is a beautifully uh small poem like a beautifully formed finger of a newborn baby it's just <laughs> small and concise but it starts with you are so small and there are so many ways you could die god good grief because that's what 
Yes. Moms think. That's yes. what moms think. It's They're like real fears. Ah, They're I real can, dreams you have. I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> yes. Whoa. But to put it that way, so when did these poems come? Did they come in the year of, you know, right away? Or did it take some um, like it was pence of time or what? Probably a couple months um, after he was born. I would have a lot of time sitting, yes. nursing him. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, holding my phone. And when I was scrolling through Instagram or doing whatever <laughs> on my phone, I I would open a note and yes. just start typing poems. That's a great way to do it. And so it was, you know, one handed holding a baby on your boob. You know, oh man, yeah. Um, but and so yeah, they started there and then I'm in a writing group that meets monthly. I started bringing them to them and none of them are parents, but they were all like these are great. You oh, need to man. put them together and then yes. it just sort of fell. Yeah. So, you know, I had lots yeah quickly sort of it it came out quick see yeah. that's 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 awesome I, I do like to know about that process i and i didn't have notes when i was <laughs> 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 i had been mm, i guess i had been writing uh well i had been writing poetry ever since i can remember but mm -hmm. whether i was i don't know i didn't start first publishing till like 1990 or so and that was um uh, my first was born that year yeah or no yeah Yes. <laughs> I don't know. You start to forget. But anyway, if I would have had notes, that would have been awesome because we had to get out the old, we had our, our lovely uh, computers and such, but I had yes. to go and grab a pen. And and it is this, gosh, you think of so much when you're, let's just talk about nursing because yeah. I know you have a lot of poems about nursing, I but do, yes. your mind goes and you describe this sensation in the poems that I read already that oh, if you haven't experienced nursing, there is there's a lot of weird <laughs> magic in it. <laughs> and your mind, the stuff that you're, I don't know if it's what your hormones make you think about, but it makes you think of um, thoughts that I know you just, that wouldn't come from anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But when you're in that that uh, period of, of bonding and um, you really are, again, like kind of hearkening back to your first poem, you're there in the room, you're there with the baby, you're there maybe surrounded by people, but you're also sort of this other in this other world yes definitely and you're also even though the baby isn't inside your belly anymore yeah. you're sort of one in that moment you know yes. there's a connection that um is just it's really hard to describe but yes it's very powerful well i love your nursing poems and i want to read i even though i couldn't find the ones that I wrote so so long ago they didn't even make it into my books but, <laughs> but I did describe this feeling and I think hopefully you can read the poem that you know what I'm talking about I um in the pattern maker's daughter the last poem called the pattern maker's daughter uh it's a poem for my dad but I have this little stanza because I'm talking about patterns the patterns that he wore and 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 the grooves we wear into the places that we frequent mm -hmm. each day and his drive to the mill each day but also these patterns that we sort of see when we go to sleep or lay down or mm -hmm. or go into some space like nursing that is another uh kind of sphere yeah but i said when my child was one day old we slept chest to chest and i dreamed i was him it was all i could do to pry myself from that prism of color shape and constant beat. I woke jolted and eyes open to the poor beige of the room, the solid gray sheets. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And it's just, it's a stanza in a poem, yeah. but I, I, that's in there because it was so primal. And I, I do recall that, um, you know, I was laying there and, you know, doing the nursing. And, and I really, when I napped, I remember literally feeling like I was, him and, and how he would be looking out to the world so it's like right. when they come out and they look out and it's all foreign and they're alien mm -hmm. i had this true sensation that i was looking out and being the newborn and yeah. then when i woke up you're already always confused when you wake up yes. i was really confused <laughs> I was like wait these are just beige sheets i'm not a newborn <laughs> but it was you get so close you do and it yeah so it's the magic of bonding and um mm -hmm. i was a big advocate of nursing and yeah, you know, did it a long time and believed in it. And it sounds like yes. you as well. Yes, me too. So yeah. let's let's hear some about that part of the motherhood yeah. experience because you do it so well. Should I know you read this one? Um, but I don't care. Ca I don't care. Yeah, let's let's do it again. Um, yeah, this poem is called "Feeding." 
I thought it would be easy, said a new mom at the baby shower. Baby, boob, what more is there, she said. But it is easy for us, little one, and it has been since the beginning. I've always known these breasts were perfect. I just misunderstood their divine purpose. They are not for enticing men into buying me drinks on a dark dance floor. They are not for showing off on a poolside Miami afternoon. These perfect nipples are, have always been, for you. Your wide, wet eyes were open from the start, shining black with the density of a universe. Your mouth open and hungry, your head rolling like a drunk. You were perfect at it, too. The sucking. The sustenance. We feed everywhere, when and wherever you tell me you're hungry. I did not know how much I'd like it. This is something no one talked about, or not much anyway, not in a way I could grasp. I duck my arm out of clothing and free my breast. You swivel your head toward me, tongue thrusting. This is a dance that we've perfected, the feeding. Twin lines of electricity run through me, up and down, head to toe. Oh, drink from me, sweet son, who came from the black depths of my body. You latch on and power up, drawing energy from my currents. I shoot you little shards of bone, and with them your body continues its work, building the bone, brewing the blood, fattening the folds of you. You suck and I tingle from skull to heel, struck with a tuning fork and humming in the blue light of a darkened bedroom. I try to feel my own edges in the low light. I send my mind to the outer edges of me. Where do I end? I send myself to my innermost edges, and I see that in both directions I am infinite. Everything is soft, every part of you and every part of me. I hold you long after you've come unlatched. Your sleeping mouth sucks a phantom teat. Your fingers clutch my thumb and turn white. That perfect invisible boob has you sleep smiling, sending you off into a dream, into dreamland. Lala, the whimsical dust of sleep, whisking you away, somewhere I cannot follow. I shuck the husk of you in bed, feet twitching and eyes rolling, lips open and circling into ecstasy. That's a nice masterpiece poem there about motherhood. <laughs> You're listening to Jessica Bates uh, reading poems from birth and what came after, poems on motherhood. You can find more of her work on www.jessicabateswriter.com. And you're listening to Everyday Poetry, Poetry for the People. I'm Sandy Gertz, and uh, this is super fun talking about uh, motherhood and uh, birth. And boy, <laughs> a time for me that was so long ago, but, um, you know, relives itself in her expression here of it. And uh, I hope you're enjoying it. We're going to take... We're going to talk a lot about that poem in a moment, but we're going to go to a little music here, a little break. Indigo Girls, Blood and Fire, appropriately. Here we are on Everyday Poetry, Poetry for the People, talking about some of those things that originate in Blood and Fire as well. We're talking about motherhood and birth and uh, bonding, the magic of motherhood and you know, kind of those things that um, aren't often spoken out to the universe. Because when you're a mom, you think a lot of these things, but you don't often write them down or take pen to paper about those most intimate moments of mothering. And um, yeah, there there's a, a beauty and a magic to it. And um, here in the studio, we're bringing back Jessica Bates, who has taken that expression and honesty of what it's really like to be in the trenches of birth and just after and nursing. And it's her book she's reading from, Poems from Birth and What Came After. And this is her firstborn book. There yes. we go. There's our second <laughs> bad pun. Um, so Jessica's here live in the studio. And I must say, like, you're the very first person that's been live here with me in the flesh i'm honored yeah it's so it's very cool i'm gonna do this more often you just have to come in and yeah. read poems all the time and chat poetry so a little bit about your background before we, we do want to talk about that beautiful po long poem that you read before the uh musical break but uh you are a native nashvillian yes you don't meet them much anymore i was gonna say you're like yeah. one of 
three yes. that I think I've <laughs> met. Uh, and you went to Hume Fog. I did, yes. Tell us about that. Oh, Creative place, it's right? It's a great place, yes. I went to Meg's Magnet School before that, which is middle school. And it feeds in to Hume Fog. So I, gotcha. I was really lucky to be able to go there. And I had really wonderful writing um, teachers there. Ah, one Bill Brown, who's a poet. Oh, Bill and, Brown, right? Who yeah. does a lot with the porch? Mm -hmm, he does. Okay. Yeah, he was my first, like, I guess, serious creative writing teacher who took us very seriously, and we took him very seriously. And nice, he did I didn't realize wonderful he stuff there. Yeah, taught there. Now I do. I have not had the chance to work with him. Mm -hmm. um, but are you a porch member as well? The porch writers. No, collective? I mean I know a lot of them, but okay. I haven't. You know, Susanna. I don't get out much because I know. Yeah. Under, we follow each other on Instagram, so I know yes. that like <laughs> we have Susanna Feltz in common. Yes, Susanna yes. is uh, one of the founders with Katie uh, McDougal of that organization. And you know, let's just give a shout out that they're the yeah. literary scene here. It's really wonderful in Nashville. Yes. It, there's so many literary events going on. Oh, yeah. And now, did you, do you know Andrew McF uh, McFadden mm. Ketchum? I'm, I hope I get his name right. That sounds familiar. He went to Hume Fogg and he's an amazing poet. He does, he produces anthologies of poetry. Yeah. The he's, name sounds very familiar. Oh, you I have to. we were to. the same year, but I'll look him up. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think he's definitely older than yeah. you. Yeah. Um, well. We, I think so, Andrew, anyway, sorry. But he I look has, younger um, than I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So um, he's published like Anders Carlson Wee and Kai Carlson Wee. Uh -huh. Amazing poets out of, uh, well, at least Anders is out of Vanderbilt. Okay. I'm going to have him on the show again. I feel like him, he and his brother, they, they hopped trains and they did all this fascinating, uh, had a fascinating um, upbringing. Yeah. And they write poems and they collaborate they don't write the poems together but they hmm. they riff off each other in these collective books and i know that anders he's gotten all kinds of uh accolades and uh what i want to say <laughs> <laughs> i think he's a macarthur i don't want to get it wrong but uh, he's he's received much much notoriety for his work and he's yeah. able to just write right now because of his um prizes that That's he's been awarded. wonderful yeah so but andrew has published them and there's that whole like nashville vandy connection so mm -hmm. i'll have to get you guys together yeah that'd be but great. yeah we do have with the porch and and you run a book a book club right yes and, uh, tell us about there's that. a coffee shop on west end called atmology it's yes. also a meeting space it's a really cozy great place but once a month we do um we read fiction this month we're reading oh I just forgot the name. <laughs> it's Octavia Butler. Yes, yes. yes. I saw that. It's yeah. A, it's a, a creepy so far. Oh. And then um, next month we're doing All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood, which has gotten, I think it won some award. It's oh, a big yes. book right now. And I'll then have to read that with you guys. We're doing Song of Solomon, which is Toni Morrison, who I oh, adore. Yes. The, in August. So Excellent. We have a really good summer reading uh, lineup going. So. And who's your writer's group? My writer's group, we just meet at a friend's house in East Nashville, and it's oh. very cozy. We call ourselves I the, live in the East paper Nashville. State. Can oh, I come? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we meet on a, a, a Thursday night once a month. So it's Very cool. I'm available Thursday. There's wine. There's I'm going to crash. It's, it's really I am fun. crashing the writer's group. Please do. I really need someone to keep me accountable. That's this is so. the reason that I wrote these poems That's and excellent. actually compiled them is because every month I would you have, have to, to bring something. Create, and yeah. I would say, Oh, I need to write a poem about this today. Are they and poets then, as well, or are they all kinds of creative? No, writers? there's some different um, fiction. Some okay, are writing cool. like creative essay type yeah. of nonfiction, yeah. creative essays. So <gasps> that it's a is really awesome. cool mix of uh, people and stories. And you hear that, yes, folks? I'm going to be crashing Jessica Bates' writers group. Um, so <laughs> let's. She read before the break, feeding, and it's about nursing. So yeah, we'll just yeah. come right out and say that. Um, and this idea of the female body, you know, it's not for enticing guys to buy you drinks, <laughs> uh, that you had that sort of, you know, epiphany realization as you were, yes, you know, they're, they're, they're made for something else, <laughs> right. too. And that, that nutrient uh, quality that I really, really the amazing miracle that we're able to yeah feed a baby entirely yeah it's a superpower from our bodies it's amazing <laughs> yeah and <laughs> i i love um they're not for showing off on a poolside miami afternoon these perfect nibbles are have always been for you and there's this um you know universe again that you enter when you are 
nursing a child and giving them all of their sustenance. Um, tell us about how this poem came about. Um, this one was, you know, started as notes on my phone again, um, but also just sort of grew. And it, um, I have it sectioned into two parts. Um, and so the second yes. part where I start, oh, drink from me, sweet son, yes. start, started as its own poem, sort ah. of an, an ode type ah, of poem. Who came from the black depths of my body. Yes. Yes. And um, so then uh, as I was editing and putting it together, I thought, you know, these just really are the same poem. So I just, you know, they're two pieces. I love that. And, you know, nursing is a journey. It's a hard. Oh, it was so hard at first really, for me. Yes. I wanted to do it so badly. And I, I mean, I ended up being ace, but I yeah. just really needed. Oh, gosh, they give you people to call. And yes, because I thought this was going to last like a day because it was right. not happening. But then once, you know, you're giving them all that immunity and everything. Yes, it's I love it. And so the beginning, the last page of this poem at the beginning, I try to feel my own edges in the low light. I send my mind to the outer edges of me. Where do I end? I send myself to my innermost edges, and I see that in both directions, I am infinite. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Woo, high fives on that yeah, stanza. <laughs> man, I love that, that is exactly what I was sort of trying to say in that, yeah. in that poem. Like, where where does the baby end and you begin and there's all this right and Sharon Olds talked in the medicine poem about we're we're, we're one she had her hand with the mm -hmm. medicine exactly the baby her <sighs> so much power in yes that. and and just to sit back and think about boy you know the infinite I like how you, I, I look in both, I see in both directions, I am infinite. Yeah. Because you are able to give life. Right. In, and the, in the, the nursing. There's some more poems in here about um, like my grandparents, my grandmothers, and sort of the line of oh, ancestors yes. that um, we're all Good stuff. just one. You know, yeah. it, it doesn't end with yeah. me. And it you're certainly giving, son. yeah, that life marrow. Right. The bo You even refer to it as bone, you know, yeah. earlier in the poem, or I'm not sure if it was this poem or the other one, but. Yeah, bone, shards of bone. Yeah, yeah. that is, yeah. that's true. Yeah. And you're giving them. It's so know, weird when the, you think about calcium. it. Yeah. How, how is it possible? It's crazy. But our bodies are amazing. <laughs> Women are amazing. Men are amazing. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely something, an area of writing that, uh, you enter another world with this, and it is unique to its own language. So what uh, what would you like to read next? Um, I've got one. Oh, oh, let me read this one called um, Beauty Mark. Mm -hmm. On my hand, between thumb and index, a mole. Right at the pressure point, the place my mother used to pinch hard when I had a migraine. Did the headache dissolve, or was the pain she created greater? My son, explorer of my body, plucks at it, the mole. He inspects its edges, flicks at it absentmindedly with his little finger while he nurses, while he watches a movie in my lap, while he cuddles against me in sleep. My imperfection, his grounding stone. When he wakes, his hand reaches for it, the mole, tucked in the V of my thumb and forefinger. When he's anxious, it calms him, fingering it, playing with its edges, I wonder if one day he will rip it off, leaving empty space beneath. We left our son for a weekend, traveled to the mountains for a wedding. My son stayed behind with my mother. She said in the night he woke, clawing at her hand, digging for a mark that wasn't there. Without his constant poking, my mole ached. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> nice. You can go right into another one if All you right. want. All right. This one is actually derived from a Sharon Olds poem Ooh. called The Pulling. Ah, okay. It's about her father, actually. Excellent. Um, should I read hers first? Y do yeah, do you have a... Uh, yeah, how, I have it is open. it a long one? Or? It's a shorty. Yeah, go ahead. All right, the, uh, this is Sharon Olds' The Pulling. Every hour now, he is changing, shedding some old ability, knees up, body tin-colored, hair black and gray, Thick with grease like ritual, ungent, my father moves, hour by hour, head first toward death. I sense every inch of him moving through me toward it, 
the way each child moved slowly down through my body, as if I were God feeling the rivers pulling steadily through me and the earth pressing through, the universe itself hauled through me heavily and easily, drawn through my body like a napkin through a ring, as if my father could live and die safely inside me. Nice. Sharon Olds there. Yes. Jessica Bates reading. And now your poem is called, is titled what? This is Mine, His Own. Nice. That's the name. So they start out similarly. Every day now, he is different, taller, face more mature, eyes serious, legs lengthening and hair thickening, a C-shaped curl on his smooth forehead. Yet he's afraid to be on his own. He wants to crawl back into me, warm sleep, bliss, wants to feel his cheek on my cheek and melt into me and wear my skin. He doesn't know yet that he doesn't need me, that one day he'll push my kiss away, gallop over to friends, eyes cutting sharp over to me, the mother, the portal that delivered him to earth. From where? Other kids are talking. Other kids don't cling desperate to mothers. Other kids aren't mine. Mine is his own and will worship his own holy place. We'll kiss animals on the mouth. We'll giggle at his father and his two wild dogs playing. And one day soon, new battles, longer legs, more hair on the body. He will unzip from me and go. Ah, oh, beautiful. And I, I cannot believe that we are out of time already. Gosh. And this has been so amazing. It quickly. <laughs> oh, it does. It does. You've been listening to Jessica Bates. And we'll, we'll have you on again, Jessica. Oh, yay. We've been talking about birth and mothering and nursing and... And um, Sharon Olds, actually, I'm not going to read this whole poem, but she wrote that, and this is how important, you know, a mother is. Um, and she's talking about when she did witness her mom passing. It's The title is To See My Mother. And the first line is, it was like witnessing the earth being formed to see my mother die, like seeing the dry lands be separated from the oceans and all the mists bear up on one side and all the solids be borne down on the other until the body was all there, all bronze. And it goes on. And it's like, that is yeah. that is the power of what we're talking about yeah. here. Oh, Jessica, I've loved our chat. And I wish you much luck with your firstborn book. Thank uh, you. Birth and what came after. Go find Jessica Bates, please, uh, at www.jessicabateswriter.com. We'll definitely have her back on. She'll come on and chat poetry. And... Um, this is Sandy Gertz. This is you've been listening to Everyday Poetry, Poetry for the People here on Radio Free Nashville, WRFN LP Pasquo. We're going to leave you with a uh, another local artist that I love to play, Tom Shrek. Uh, I don't feel like crying, but this is called Tonight. I feel like crying, and I just feel mellow and just kind of want to play this beautiful song of his. We'll be back next week with Lindsay Teague, winner of the Ira Prize. I'm Sandy Gertz, and have a great Sunday.